Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Deep State. We have an episode today entitled Winning Ground in the Mind War. And our special guest is a return guest from Scotland, and his name is Aidan, and he was just an excellent guest last time he was here, really introduced a lot of great ideas and synthesized a lot of great ideas and really spoke to uh, many, from a unique perspective, many of the things going on today in the world and in our own minds. So we're going to come back to that. He also spoke about his spiritual journey. I'll do a quick recap before I say hello to Aiden. He is from Scotland. Scotland. He grew up. He had a very unique upbringing. His father worked at lighthouses, so he uh, traveled a number of locations. He went to high school in South Africa, was in the military there, had sort of uh, struggled with his spiritual life. And then at a fairly young age, I think he was in the military, he had sort of an epiphany and took a long journey through the world of ideas. And he's really well read. And um, he finally is in the bosom of the church. And we ended up, um, which I thought personally was very touching, in a in a place where he's just living in a place of grace right now. He's doing his rosary each day and just really taking in what's going on in the world, but uh, trying to be in the world, but not of the world. So Aiden, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Thanks. Thanks, Dr. Hargan. Yeah, thanks for inviting me back. Oh, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed our conversation. It picked up especially, we did about an hour here and I think an hour or two hours on locals. So it really built up and in it, it was great. I loved it. And um, I threw this over to Aiden. I guess I'm talking, to, I threw this over to you and you came up with this title and all these ideas. And I said, just go for it. I, I didn't know if I wanted to kind of research with you or just look to it. So mostly these are, I'm assuming, uh, ideas uh, that um, are a continuation of what we talked about last time and ideas going on in the world. And ultimately, I guess it's about winning ground in the mind war. I guess it's against all these um, kind of dark forces in the culture around us today and mind demons, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think, as I said last time, I'm I'm uh, a convert of what is it two just over two and a half years now. So everyone take everything I say with a big pinch of salt. If I say anything that is is incorrect, in re I'm I'm still very much um, a, a beginner. It's it's actually a joy to come into this uh, and have so much ahead of me. I, I just you can just. I can now immerse myself, I feel, for the rest of my life, potentially, in Catholic sources. Um, it, it, it's not that I, I didn't study. I studied Catholic mystics after my mystical experience, after what I experienced in the army. Um, and then there's this kind of loss, <laughs> loss of Meister Eckhart was the one who, gosh, you know, that really, I, I loved Meister Eckhart. And then I feel I've had to surrender. Uh, there's a lot of things that you have to let go of and I, letting go of um, mystics who um, I now recognize with, as I spoke about last time, the, the kind of via negativa, the, the, the path of negation where you have a, a spiritual experience and experience of illumination. And and then that gets conflated. I, I, I know I spoke about it at length, but just in case anyone missed uh, or didn't hear, um, in, in the negation, negation of being, which you write about in your book, the, there is a, a, it's not that nothing happens. It's that there's a, there's a, a power that comes through and a light and, a, and you mistake that for something divine. You mistake that for God. And in the perennial philosophy, that gets, also gets called the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost, or it gets called Christ. Um, and they say, you see, this is all the same thing. So what you get over here in the, in the negative path in, in, in Hinduism, let's say, or Buddhism, which is very much about um, negation, or Taoism, where you're approaching uh, Wu Chi, what they, what they would call Wu Chi beyond Tai Chi, the, the harmony of the opposites, is this place of nothingness from which everything comes. Um, and it comes spontaneously. And so there's this idea that 
actually that's there and and all the all the the great mystics would would travel through their tradition this is the kind of perennial philosophy view and they would kind of pop out the top uh into the into the real truth which would be this negative way and and it would turn out that that was the same as all the other mystics and all the other traditions and so what you would have with the, the people like aldous huxley who wrote a book which appealed to me um when i was i think 20 or end of in my 19th year at the beginning of the 20th year um he took all of these mystics from all of the different traditions and said you see that they're, they're all saying the same thing and the thing is if that's the case it's very compelling um if that's the case you don't need to come through the through the door uh, as as christ says you you must do um come in through the door into the sheepfold don't climb over the wall if you climb over the wall, if you come in by another way you're you're a robber you're basically you're breaking in and you're stealing something and it's a destroyer as well so even though it seems very compelling and it seems very good and it has a very strong moral uh force to it this is what was the counterpart um to the having no transcendent reality and having everything collapse into the imminent frame as you describe in your book um the reverse of that is the metastatic faith position which is you're kind of locked into this um denial of the world um and it's easy to fall into if you're if you're following a an intensely spiritual path you you start to overvalue the spirit and devalue the the body the flesh the world the things around you these things don't matter and you can see how that's leading to a kind of negation people can end up doing all kinds of austerities in order to produce these um these mystical experiences which do come but the but again it's a mistake it, it becomes very clear that's all the spirituality of the serpent it's all um the what you get when you negate being and it's very hard to see that uh, I, I would say it's nearly impossible actually to see that from inside when you're intensely following a path like that. yoga also where you're stilling the mind you're you're entering a void and there's an experience of unity with all things and it's very hard to say oh that's that's not good <laughs> it seems really good you know it seems better than anything and it's, it's described as vogelin's uh, work which you, you draw on it at that point in in the pursuit of the metaverse um he splits it into those two and he uses isaiah from from the old testament as an example of metastatic faith where the there's a blaze of glory there's an intense um overwhelming uh sense of like divine glory which swallows everything up and and it seems wonderful but basically we don't follow we don't follow isaiah it's not that he didn't have something to contribute and something to say and it's not that there isn't something close to to the divine there but it actually belongs that whole thing it's not christ when christ comes the game is changed for everybody on both sides of that well what we talked about last time they were they're together the, the heavenly and the earthly the transcendent reality and the imminent frame are together and when christ comes he incarnates reality he incarnates divinity and that takes all the divinity out of the world so the world is de-divinized um so anyway that's just a kind of recap of um yes okay uh, let me see if i got this right let's put so meister eckhart is a medieval theologian and i think later on he was kind of put into a non-canon so he's really in this camp through this negativa to simply to say it simply a mystic wants this direct experience instead of going through the mediation of the church and the sacraments they want a direct experience and whether it's yoga it's just this uh it, it's this oneness um and more often than not this is probably a oneness with some ethereal spirits that we th that overwhelm us and oftentimes we mistake that or maybe almost always we mistake that for being the holy ghost um and this would be maybe the serpent coming as a, an angel of light yeah and it really so the whole of the new age yeah. is really it's this almost pantheistic monism that everything 
there everything come one and everything come together at the same time the only time i've ever experienced something like this i don't like to say this as in new york city it was many years ago and i took some drug and like uh, spirits were coming into me and saying like aha everything is one you're connected to everything and uh, that was my only experience to, you know some kind of real true drug experience kind of thing um, and that seems to be like the serpent whispering in your ear. And I guess that's the closest that the serpent can get to replacing the trueness of the Holy Ghost and the connection we have, the hypostatic union. Does that sound okay? Does that sound kind of right? To me, yes. Yes, okay. yes, yes. I just want to make sure I got So a mystic wants to shortcut, because we even have Catholic mystics, but some of them are legitimate, I think. No, no, without a doubt, without doubt. Yeah, yeah, okay. no, with that, it's it's just that um, you go back to he's called pseudo Dionysus, but the the idea of the celestial hierarchies and all that. But he's, I think, for for the church, where the the idea of the two paths come in, the idea of a positive path, which affirms the world and affirms the fact that you can approach God and you can uh, by analogy, you know, by 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 analogy with natural things, we can understand it's like this only only more so, you know, in proportion. In so way. he is a Neoplatonist and we know we're on the right path um, because the mystic, just everything kind of disappears, but we work from the revelations that God, from what God has revealed about himself. And we're on fir pretty firm ground, at least if we have that there. And also yeah. if we accept the mediation, that's part of that revelation. And then uh, St. Saint Thomas, um, revisits and through the by analogy uh, really draws it all out um the idea that you can have this positive path and i was speaking briefly about that last time that because i did the same thing of us taking aquinas as what he says at the end when he has he has a mystical experience and says all his works were like straw and then the mist the mystic the person who wants the direct experience can say well you see it's all superfluous we don't we don't need any of that we can just have this one of the things that's about that is it's very individual you know it's a it's an it's an individual it's it's you go in you do the thing whether it's the meditation the stilling whatever practices you're 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 doing but it's very it's very specific to you uh it's not the body of christ and it seems not to need to be part of it and it's only when you have the two side by side it's only when um coming into the body of Christ and being a living member of the body of Christ and having a completely different understanding where you can then see side by side and and say this is this is not it so what is it then what is it if it's not it and then it, it it's it's revealed that it's actually a power that is counter to even though it doesn't seem to be so it's very it's very deceptive uh, that way um yeah so so the the way the way of analogy, um, I was going to maybe speak about that in a bit um, because the um, I wanted to speak about the the, the positive way and the um, a, as a kind of antidote to a lot of the deceptions that are going on in the world, and it's a way of seeing and understanding the world that is um, uh, well because it's it's grounded correctly. Uh, in in reality, it has the two together. It has the um, transcendent and the unit together. But they're in they're in Christ. They're in the incarnation. So they're not in us. I don't lay like, claim to that myself and say I will now walk around and be that. No, Christ is that. And so uh, all of us who are members of his living members of his his mystical body, there's your mysticism. You don't actually need any other personal mysticism. You don't need obviously you can grow in holiness that's a personal journey um but that is all in a reality that's very um tangible and daily and has relationship and has has everything in it it is this it is this world you know, which is not the same thing as i'm i'm becoming uh, holier at the expense of this world at the expense of my life in this world that's that's the it's a new age mistake and it's 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 I mean, it, it's the opposite of ecumenical as well. It's very comp compelling evidence to me as well to the absolute claims of the church. 
that it is it cannot be fitted in with these other paths. That one of the things that reveals to me that the negative way is incorrect is precisely because it integrates all of these other traditions and paths and ways. The one that doesn't fit, the one that's uh, folly to the Greeks and a stumbling stone to the to the Jews, is the Catholic Church. It doesn't fit. It doesn't have a. So you have people within it who've who've who represent a kind of um, negative path. And Meister Eckhart, who I was a huge, huge fan of, <laughs> uh, I can now see is in this direct line with, I mean, Hegel is inspired by Eckhart and I can, I can, I can see it goes back at, like in, in your book yeah. to Joachim and, and where it all comes in, this ca kind of Kabbalistic thinking. Very Kabbalistic. He's referring back to, he's referring back to, to philosophical masters frequently and, and, and their various insights. But he is, all, one of his lines was, um, God never tied um, salvation. God never tied man's salvation to a particular pattern. And that's not true. That's not true. There's a divine pattern for us as individuals, and there's also a divine pattern for us collectively, for society. Um, and, and, and I mean, there's, there's certainly plenty of examples of, of, of where it seems like that. how this reality is. Um, I did a video the other day and I talked about what we talk about, uh, what we affirm or confirm when we say the Apostles' Creed and um, Christ died, was buried, went to hell. He ascended into heaven. So his with his physical body, he left his mystical body here. But even within the mystical body to get reality correctly and that mediation between his physical body and his, and his mystical body, that medicsy, there is a physical element to our faith. And at the very least, um, apostolic succession works through human beings and the host is a physical thing. Water baptism is a physical thing. So it's very minimal. If it's just belief, it's it gets it edges on this type of mysticism or Gnosticism. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So I didn't want to necessarily take up too much time with the, okay. the, the recap, but wanting to then um, talk about or what, what we had discussed um, about present times and the spectacle and the, the pull for people. I had noticed after the um, the event with uh, Donald Trump on the oh, stage. Oh, I'm glad you're getting uh, into that. Okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah, that was so. Yeah. As to speak more specifically about some of the some of the things, and, and maybe kind of because I'd noticed just how strong the pull was for people, uh, like really strong. To, okay, Aiden, can you can you? It's hard for me to do without just reading the book over here. Can you put the spectacle in your own words? This biopolitical pull, because the thing about biopolitics, it's a mysterious force in the modern world. Well, it was also in the ancient world because it controls us from within and we don't see it. How would you, can you put it in your own words? Because it's hard for me. Uh, gosh, I, I, I don't know if I've done it. It has a, a demonic ontology. We get swept away with the events of the world. It would without, be worldliness in sacred scripture, would call it. Without, well, it's, it's kind of the alternative to where we should have our attention. You know, so that's yes. one way of thinking about the spectacle is, Spectacle, as in that's where our idea of spectacular comes from. Also, spectacles, it's visual, it's what we're looking, it's where our attention is going. And the idea of the spectacle is it's going to be so strong, it's going to be something so um, dynamic and engaging, and and it's going to, the power of it is going to pull our attention into it. We're going to go, oh, wow, uh, or oh, my goodness, or, you know, it'll be, it might be horror, it might be, you know, it could be all kinds of things. And it's this but direct it, 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 experience that the mystic wants. It's this kind of, uh, like you say, of what the uh, the Greeks want knowledge and the Jews want a sign. They want something here and now that they can feel to be wowed by. Yeah, and and you could say that the spectacle is like the worldly mysticism. It's 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 mysticism for the completely worldly person. Like it's going to give you the thing, and you're going to go into it, and it's going to be a big experience. It's going to be powerful. But it's also going to pull you along. Uh, once you've lost your ground, you're going to you're entering into it emotionally, mentally, and it's going to pull you along. So the idea of like the, the idea of the egregores or the, de the delusional, it has an energy to it. It has a direction to it. it has an impulse to it that that grabs people. So people engage 
uh, mentally with it, but then it moves them. It will move them to be potentially take to the streets or take up arms or who knows what it might do. You don't know where you're going to end up because it's going to dictate to you by its images, by its messages, by its the, the demonic aspects of it could lead you. You've no idea where they're going to lead you because they're in charge once you've given yourself over to it. And that's why I think you're warning uh, over and over people. I don't know whether people can hear it. I certainly hear it when you say it. Uh, there's a reason that this needs to be warned against. And uh, there was a there was a link somebody put up. It was on the Telegram channel. It was absolutely a brilliant quote from uh, Saint Augustine, and it was about it was from the Confessions, and it was about attending the um, the games, you know, the in the arena, which is kind of where you, you draw on that in the in in the book. And it was about someone who was refusing to go and had only contempt for the idea. An absolutely horrible thing. This person was said this person was too you know his instincts were fine and he wouldn't you know he had no wish to go and and really a desire not to go and not to have anything to do with it. and the friends tried to get him to go along he goes along the roar of the crowd the kind of blood the the power of it and he's a changed person it kind of tears through him and changes him and he ends up dragging other people to go along to the next games and the next ones and He's screaming for, so it, it's a shocking, and I believe that the, you know, he eventually comes to Christ. He comes out of that, but it's like a possession that happens. It's a very powerful example of someone's being taken over by something, and it's not a good thing. Some of the things, that, I mean, that's a that's an extreme example, you know, for someone being for to see to see blood spilled in a in a sport in front of a, with a with a crowd roaring. But there are plenty of other examples that are, they seem innocuous, but they have the same dynamic in that they seize hold and they carry you along. They carry you away and you don't know where you're going to end up because you're no longer fully in control of yourself. It seems like you are because you, you think your thoughts are your own, you know, because whose else would they be? But actually you're in the grip of a, something which has a logic of its own, which will almost do your thinking for you. <laughs> it will say, well, well, if, if this happened, then that must be the case. And now I must go and do this. And there, so there is a logic to it. And that's also extremely hard to break out of, which is why voluntarily entering into it, thinking it will be okay, I can just do this little bit. I can take a, a little bite of this and I'll be fine. Um, that's, it, it may be the case, <laughs> but it's actually unlikely because you are partaking of something that you then don't have full control over. So it may end up, sure, you may just have a, a a little bit and then no more, or you may be pulled right into something very dynamic, especially now that there's a that there's a mind war and that they've moved, that they've advanced. There's an agenda being advanced uh, through many different facets, through, from many different angles. There's vectors to this. It's not just like one aspect, a one-off thing that happens. And then there's there's a, a openly stated uh, war happening. They're, 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 they describe uh, fifth generation warfare. The battleground is the human mind, the human heart, winning over people's uh, thinking and their, their values. If they have the wrong values, getting them to change their values to the ones that uh, are desirable for the, for the powers that be. And we've... We've experienced this in spades in uh, uh, 2020 up until, you know, for a couple of, for several years, it was a very extreme experience. But that's yeah, why I was going to... One example, and I'll let you get on. I don't want to, I, I, I want to talk as little as possible because I can't wait to hear this. But, you know, you sometimes you see this loop going on. Just to let us know, this is part of the age of illumination. It's, about, it's the apocalypse. It's the unveiling. Um, Larry Fink, who is the CEO of... BlackRock, you know, if you've ever seen this, he goes, that's what we're doing. We're reshaping values. We're going to make you love uh, diversity or whatever. Yes, um, and we're about nudging, changing any means possible that you're going to accept our behaviors and our worldview. And so BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, that's about 80% of the modern economy. In fact, that's who owns almost 80% of Ukraine right now. But I don't want to get, so this is literally, they're telling you that we want you to have our values, our behaviors, 
which are not necessarily consistent with scripture. And that's what I think is one of the hardest things for, for us to get our mind around is that the fifth generation warfare is psychological attack, but it's not out in the open. It's, it's, it's invisible. It's coming in through the media. It's coming in through uh, images. It's coming in through advertising. There's, there's all of these different coming through the news and how the stories are placed. It's, but it's warfare. And the targets are the domestic populations of the countries that are employing these things first before they, before they target, uh, which is why the, the, the big fear of the enemy within, it grows all the stronger if you're, if you're increasingly controlling the thinking and values of your population and becoming increasingly intolerant of things which diverge from that because, you know, it's spoiling your, it's spoiling your agenda. You know, so you want to specifically target as carefully as possible to change and shift people off the ground that they're currently on, onto ground that you control. So this idea of controlled ground, so to get people to fight battle, to get them to engage very intensely in political um, conflict, to fight out that battle, but on ground that is fully controlled, so that all of the energies that are expended in the process are absorbed into the into this dialectical circle. All you're actually doing is charging it up, you know, adding charge to it. You're not actually in any danger of winning anything. If the idea of like winning territory in the in the metaverse, in the simulacrum, the 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 unreality. So there's this terrain, it's unreal. You maybe win part of it, but you don't actually control it. So the victory will be short lived. It will change. Even if you were to seemingly win something. How long have you got it for before it changes? Because you're on moving ground. That's the nature of this alternative to the church, to the idea of the rock, to the idea of your house being built on a rock, or your civilization being built on something that doesn't change, on, on being. It is static. It's not going to change. It's not going to change from now until the end. It won't change. And so we're judged in the light of our relationship to things that won't change. So that anyway can, can get there, but but to to bring it to the, the the Trump stage magic, it's it's phenomenal actually. When I was a, uh, I think it was in my mid-teens, where my brother and I we got taken to a, a stage magic uh, event, and it was the Pendragons. It was called Spellbound. The Pendragons were they were American stage magicians, kind of like David Copperfield style. And they did things on the stage <clears throat> that were impossible. And we watched it happen and we could not believe our eyes, but we saw it happen. We couldn't explain how they did it. You couldn't see what angles, how did they, obviously they were managing angles of your perception, aspects of your perception, so that you saw something that didn't actually happen, but you saw it happen. Um, it, was, it was incredible. They sawed two women in half, sw swapped the the one half of the body with the other half so they ended up one was dressed in white at the beginning one was dressed in red by the end they were wearing mixed clothing you couldn't see how it was done they, they someone disappeared from right in front of your um in front of your eyes they dropped a, a veil or something they're gone and then they appeared way at the back of the auditorium so you saw them there there didn't seem to be any mirrors any you couldn't see the trick um but the thing with the trump magic it's so it's so funny it's so it's so intense it's, it, it's it's humorous it's mocking it has that quality of mockery to it i think the, the i i always notice it in this cabalistic uh, two-step thing they always put an element of we're laughing at you while we do this um the you, i could see how that's done you know i could see it doesn't take it doesn't take a because the angle the angle the line of sight is controlled. I, I, his ear is not being filmed. There's no. I've still not seen it. If there's footage of, you know, getting hit, I haven't seen it. Um, I don't think it. I don't think it exists because <laughs> I don't think that that is what happened. I think it's been shown. I think people are digging into this, um, in so many different ways. Uh, yeah, we don't need to get into the specifics of it. Just the fact that it seems designed, and it's like it's one I've not seen before. Um, it seems designed to produce uh, a 
of like a psyop designed to produce a view of a conspiracy for two sides. So one side, the left, is coded for the left is he he's it's a staged event. He did it to himself uh, in order to advance his uh, position and gather people to him and make it look like something um, miraculous happened. And the coded right is the deep state want to get rid of uh, Donald Trump. They hate him. They've always wanted to get rid of him. And this was them trying to do it. But they did it in this really sloppy way, which let us see all kinds of weird things that just not credible, you know, not credible to leave all these gates open. And it's reminiscent of a bunch of other things as well. It's reminiscent of like 9-11, which is one-sided. 9-11 wasn't for like the left and the right, like two different versions. It's like, here's one big thing happening. But the thing is that people dug into that. It spawned a truth movement uh, of people who now are questioning everything they're told. And But it made no difference. It made no political difference. So you expose it. And that's the thing that people are doing now, digging into this, bringing to light all kinds of anomalies. And what happens is it gets absorbed into the spectacle. It becomes another part of the show. It's like, here's this guy over here. And he's saying that there were three shots and then five shots. And the three shots came from like a professional shooter and the five shots came from the Patsy. And, uh, you know, and you can, you can go into all of this stuff. You can work out <laughs> what should and shouldn't have happened. Why was the perimeter not secure? The deep state obviously wanted rid of it. Which is just how anyone could go along with it. It's not credible because if they wanted rid of him, he'd be he'd be gone. You know, he'd be gone quietly as well. It'd be like in a very plausible way. It's like he's an elderly man. <laughs> he's uh, he's not. Yeah, it feeds the spectacle on so many levels. That so since the event from four or five years ago, people are starting to question the magic, and like, how did everybody get duped? Was it beyond just the censorship? and um the authoritarian nature of everything and then as they're doing that they get pulled back into the you know the dialectic the magic at so many levels it's so and then funny. when you start picking it apart and i was going to do a video yesterday but i think i'm going to wait till tomorrow or monday um about the spectacle um and i i want to get right back to you but the idea if you know the cosmic conspiracy between the city of man and the city of God, the church and the synagogue, the main, you just ask who benefits. And if it's the synagogue or the false church, pull away from it. And that's all you need to know because that stuff is part of the bread and circus. That'll get you right back in there. Um, but I think it, I heard this this week. Apparently in 1980, maybe 81, David Copperfield made the, um, the Statue of Liberty disappear. Now, even if I don't know how he did it, that doesn't mean he actually made it disappear. You know, that's the bottom yeah. line, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't need to know that he didn't do it. I, I do know how he did it. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah. They, they had two pillars, and everyone was on a, a stage, and they they turned because it was loud music, bam, 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 uh, and they had a, a the Statue of Liberty was between these two big pillars, and the the curtain comes down, it's gone. And it's, it's behind one of the pillars. So they turned the stage so that the line of sight for everybody who was sitting there, live audience, was obscuring. So they'd worked out the distances. Again, it's about control of lines of sight, you know, control so that and you. That's what the serpent know. always does in one way or another. It's, he can't Rotation. change <laughs> um, ontological reality of Christ's physical body and his mystical body. He can only bring us into the city of man from from our vantage point when we want to see this reality yeah yeah no i mean hey I, I can't remember what else i was going to say about trump the interesting thing was was the capture because it's designed to do that it's not designed for the left although it has a nice uh you know it's got the thing he he, he faked it it's designed for the right you know this is there's, there's times when it moves and and it's all the focus is on the left. All the focus in the U.S. Uh, has been on the on the left for a good while in ascendancy, building up a head of steam for everyone with, who wants to conserve to actually conserve things that hold uh, society together, things that are of importance. 
So they're building up ahead of steam. And then this shift, the, there's a shift now to the right to capture everybody and pull them in. Because if they stay outside and want change, you know, this can't go on and they stay on solid ground, they might have some effect eventually. At least, at the very least, they can't be won over. <laughs> they can't be pulled into some nonsense. But if, so the if great you're... delusion, although this is American stuff, I think it sweeps up the imagination of the world because, you know, that's kind of the concept from the metaverse book is it's an, it's, um, an empire of spectacles. So something goes on in one spot once it gets picked up and repeated over and over. So now the big magic is that the Trumpers or conservatives or whatever you want to call them, like I suggested in my last video, they're not conserving anything, but they think they're winning ground right now, getting away from wokeness. And in fact, they're going in the wrong direction, but they have to say, Sleepy Joe, where whoever this guy is now that suddenly is a foot taller, <laughs> came out of the picture. <laughs> um, so it, it is a great, great deception. And it is that deliberate movement. And they're they're going right into the city of man, thinking they're going in the other direction, and it's 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 devilishly clever. And the sad part is when you tell people over and over the whole length of this channel, just pull yourself out of this, you invariably get the question, "Well, what do you want me to do?" Mm -hmm. Meaning that I guess prayers don't work, devotions don't work. <laughs> That's what they're really saying, it seems to me. Um, but get back to reality, and for a lot of people, that's not happening i know five years ago nobody wanted to hear it but i do know over on telegram and in locals people are talking about that and it, it resonating with people so it's extremely satisfying to me that it does speak to some people right now no for sure i mean that's the thing with say like voting um this was the first election in in britain where i didn't it was a westminster election uh the beginning of the month actually um and I didn't vote. I voted every every vote in my adult life. I did spoil a ballot in the previous one. Um, this time I didn't go, and it was the night before I realized, oh yeah, there's a there's a vote happening. I've forgotten it was I've forgotten it was the next day. And I I must admit I had a tremendous sense of peace. So this is personal and subjective. I had a tremendous sense of peace uh, to be unplugged from it in a way that I don't believe I would have. I've had peace and groundedness uh, had I gone along and cast even an angry ballot because, you know, scribble some something. Oh, fair enough, people do it because they want to vent in a way. The system's not going to count your spoiled ballot. It's going to treat it as someone who didn't know how to fill it out and voted for right. two or three candidates. And, and Aaron had the suggestion to write in Christ the King, but I don't know if that would just get spit out or if that would get counted towards something. But I, I it's an interesting idea. I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if you're, to me, those are the two options, you know, I'd like not voting. And so I have to say that the not voting, I, I, I have felt a detachment from the process that is new to me because I normally, even if I'm angry at everything that's going on and I'm disenchanted and I want it to be otherwise, um, some part it's got some part of me all that so, mimetic energy that the world wants from you and you put it back over toward the true spectacle of christ that does seem to me to be the that is the nature of the war the invisible war that's the what's happening at the fundamental level is is it all it's all going over here or is some of it going in over into the spectacle a little bit a little bit can we in fact control how much we give to it and especially if we get more invested because you don't know how invested you're going to be with the next turn of events you know like okay i'm voting for let's say i was in the states voting for trump um out of like well he's a better candidate than this other you know horrendous thing uh so on paper uh true <laughs> um and then let's say they decide to really play games build up a huge head of steam on the right and then not give it to uh, uh to trump you know currently looks like it will go his way but let's say they don't that head of steam's just going to be explosive so it depends really on what they want they played they played the uk like a violin politically because our the government who the party the that Tories let everybody in the door 
the Tories let the the immigration they didn't behave like Tories in any way yeah. not in any way like there's no measure there's a slight resistance to some of the excesses of wokeness that's all you got I won't go into all those little play on the culture war to give some people some breadcrumbs yeah bread real not even a slice of bread just crumbs <laughs> um, but, but they it wasn't just that Labour got no they got fewer votes in absolute terms than the previous two elections which had Jeremy Corbyn and you know you had a left kind of left thing happening so they got more votes in back then than these guys got but they got a landslide so they got a landslide to give them this immense legitimacy to do whatever they want to do and they engineer that well it looks engineered to to to, to my eye with uh, Nigel Farage coming in with a month to go and standing for something that can split what's left of the Tory vote that would have kept some of the Labour seats. And I'm not saying under the Labour Reform Party, the Reform Party comes in yeah. and effectively sets up. And then after the fact, is ready to merge with what's left of the, the Tory party. So um, it's it's a game. It's a game. And they played it amazingly well. So they get a, a nice big majority. If they go the way that looks, they guess potentially get a, a nice large majority. I think that's part of yeah. what helps you get out of the spectacle, just like the events over the last four years, when all the leaders, even if they're from the East or the West, if they're all down with the, you know, the same things, the same essential things, like it wasn't Fauci that came up with the six feet, that's to get you back into your locality and your immediate momentics. But once you kind of see that, it helps you go like, oh, it's a deliberate swing. And, um, I was corresponding this week with a priest who's watching the channel and on local. So I hope to speak to him sometime. And I think he really keyed in when we need to get back, when, when our interpretation of reality has got so off and something goes on in our mind that I need to pull out, identify, detach. It's nothing new, the advice, but it really hit me. I think it is devotion to the blessed mother. Um, I think to Catholics and especially non-Catholics. No, it couldn't be that easy. <laughs> but it's a particular a, it's a particular devotion to get back to reality, her son, and to particularly ask for pulling yourself back to the fullness of this reality through the Blessed Mother. But I'm going to yeah. let you continue. Uh, well, that was that 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 was Trump. The 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 um. I think the difficulty is um, I want to sort of situate your channel um, and the difficulties in communicating with people about this stuff, because that's one of the things that makes it so difficult um, to live, you know, like when people want to know what to do, um, it's, it's an impulse, you know, we have to, we have to fight this fight It's so urgent and so important. And that's obviously, that is the mind war is um, tricks, lies, illusions, um, confusion, confounding people so that they surrender their critical faculties that, well, I don't know, I just, I give up, especially embarrassing people uh, with getting them to believe something that then turns out to be false. Um, because you find that in the, I'm sure you've seen it a thousand times in the truther world, is get somebody to take on something that is then easily demolished. You know, it's a, it's a way of getting rid of of a, a threatening movement that is threat. You know, it's got all the truth. You take all of that truth. You agree with it, which is takes nerves of steel, obviously, for the people who uh, want it to go away. They want to get rid of it, um, and you put in some small lies and you put in a big lie. The big lie then detonates and everyone's got egg on their faces because they swallowed this lot and it allows it to be rubbish you can say oh you know it's complete nonsense um so this this kind of that all of that nonsense that's the surface level all the lies and the illusions are able to get to get you to see things a certain way to then be able to get to the deeper level which is what you believe what you value and to get at your morale as well if you can despair or uh, you know, say, oh, well, I just, yeah, I just give in, getting people to give in so that that can all be reprogrammed. And then the deepest level is what you're describing. It's described in typological terms. 
as something that is fundamental which which way is our soul going is it going into reality is it coming back to christ is it coming to our lady is it joining with all the saints um or is it is it going into this morass is it going into this are we going to be hollowed out and essentially occupied i mean to me that's the exceptionally frightening way of putting it is that as as we go out from ourselves something comes in to drive the process you know so that's the demonic ontology is that's why the, the basic frame is a type of possession you don't just get to go out onto the moving ground and do all the, the exciting dramatic stuff there's a there's a an occupation of well what what, what should be it occupied by us where we should be we should be standing our ground on the rock you know standing our ground within the church standing our ground with the deposit of faith um standing our ground with an unshakable uh reality of the, the mystical body of christ and and all of it the promises and the realities of it and the graces we should be able to stand with that now that is the faith aspect, the works aspect, is the culture that's generated. So there's the sal salvation of the soul and being part of reality, being in reality and part of reality. And then the works aspect is what generated culture. It's what our forebears, it's how, where our civilization has come from, from their works. You know, they built it. They built a, a Catholic civilization. They built a, a civilization that was based on catholicism and had catholicism the catholic church the eucharist at the heart of it um and then everything all around that and you can endlessly generate a wholesome uh human culture from that and that that's where the work is like what should we do well we need to be grounded in the faith and protecting the faith from all of these attacks and the works are any culture any any type of culture at all but it's going to be essentially now parallel to what we think of as as our culture our society because this whole political battle is happening in a, a on this controlled ground it's all very dynamic and it's all, but really it's small <laughs> it is not great it is small and it it should we should really cast it out of ourselves you know there's a there's a the analogy for the the last time you used a really interesting thumbnail picture for the talk I had with you of the coiled uh, rope with the head of a snake, because it was the the logic of the serpent that we were talking about. And uh, there's a there's a little metaphor from Eastern mysticism, which is the idea of being frightened of a snake. You think you see a snake, it turns out to be a rope. You know, and all's fine. You know, you, your system calms right down, and so there's nothing there's nothing to be frightened of the the reverse for for us i think is you thought you were using this rope you know you thought you had this useful bit of rope <laughs> that you could tie things with or pull things with you know there's all sorts of stuff you can do it's actually a snake you don't see it's a snake and when you see it's a snake you throw it as, away from yourself as far as you can get it you're just like without even thinking you you will throw that thing they never do that in the in the easter stuff it's all like calm right kind of anesthetizing um in a way so that you'll uh, um it's the extinguishing of the suffering subject you know the the, the poor the poor soul is suffering we're going to end the suffering you know that's sorry if that, that but that to me is eastern mysticism in a nutshell so you're you're muted some some cultures more explicitly worship snakes and serpents um, and then others think that they're not, but they invariably do. And that's where we get into this idea of not realizing that the modern age has been tainted by the prince of this air and the events and that it's a it's the postmodern um, um, bread and circus. So I'm going to pull things together for this segment. And the key questions we ask want to ask at this point, winning ground in the culture or winning ground in the um mind war so the question is what is ground and of course that gets a little philosophical that's the ground of being 
and the mind wars, this kind of high tech, sixth gener fifth or sixth generation deep fake reality um, that seems to be literally, we saw it in the last two weeks, just reframing the whole notion of what is transcendent and what is just simply stage magic. And we want to dig into that a little bit, but really find out like, how do we know that we're actually on the ground and gaining ground. And I think that's what we want to dig into a little bit. And we maybe want to hop into topics that were a little, you know, we want to be able to be a little bit more free to speak. So we're going to wind this segment down here on YouTube. I hope everybody out there is doing great. And thank you for joining us here um, on the channel with our segment, Winning Ground in the Mind War. We are now going to hop over. We got a live feed waiting for us and an audience waiting for us over on Locals. So we're going to wind things down everybody. So we're going to see you for now and I'll be back with everybody on YouTube very shortly. Thank you very much. <laughs> 